Alright guys, how's it going? So here's a few tips if you're moving from another 3D application to Blender. Now the first and most important rule is, you've got to respect the default cube. You've got to love it like a brother and you need to meme about it at least twice a week. <laughs> Kidding on, 9 times out of 10 most people delete the default cube. Which brings me on to my next point. Saving the default startup file. Now if you're happy with your keyboard commands and your UI, if you come to file, defaults, save startup and that will basically save the startup file. One thing I see a lot of users complain about, especially new users, is there's no quad view in Blender. Of course there is. If you go to view, area, toggle quad view and the shortcut for this is control, alt and q. So you can easily toggle in and out. That kind of brings back that Maya lightwave feel maybe. Another quick tip is learning shortcuts. I know it sounds mundane and I know it sounds very basic but things like learning T to bring the toolbar in and out or N to bring the properties, it just makes your life so much easier. And one tip I could probably give is most of the tools can kind of correspond to the correct key. So E will be extrude, B will be bevel and obviously you've got X, Y and Z which deals with the axis. Now the best tip that I can honestly give is using the search bar which is F3. So if you're ever struggling to remember a command or you don't know something in Blender, use the search function and it's context sensitive so it works differently in terms of edit mode and object mode. But personally, I have this set to spacebar. I just find it a little bit more natural. In order to change this, if you go to edit, preferences, go down to key mapping. Now you could be a real sadist here and change select with the mouse back to right click, but it's your software, I'm not judging. But you can see here, spacebar action, play, tools and search. And it really is your preference, I prefer it to be search. And you can also change the tab for the pie menu. Now generally you'll find pressing tab takes you into edit mode. And it's pretty handy but again, your software, I'm not judging, do what you like. But since I'm in the preferences, it's probably a good time just to look at some of the basics. And sure as hell, you're going to need to install an add-on. So if you go to add-ons, hit install. 9 times out of 10, it's a zip file, install the zip file, hit enable, job done. Now there's a few add-ons here that should probably be enabled by default. Things like extra objects, curve tools, B tracer, there's a whole bunch. Best thing to do is check out YouTube and you'll get a lot more information. Now when it comes to theming Blender, it's probably one of the most versatile in all the 3D packages. There's not an area that you can't really get into. Now you could be really extravagant and have stupid UI colours, like some people that I know, or you can make it nice and sleek. And there's plenty of themes for you to download, so there is a Lightwave theme out there, there is a Modal theme out there, there is a Max theme out there. Just search the internet. One thing that I do recommend you do is change the file paths. So set up your file paths, the temporary files, where your render output goes to, and obviously you have things like system, so you can actually change the Cycles render device here. So you can change it to CUDA, opti Optics, or OpenCL. And you can also kind of play around with some of the undo steps, but we'll leave that at the moment. Now, one quick tip I can give you is pressing Shift and A, and that basically adds things. It's a context sensitive menu, so if you're in nodes, it'll add nodes. If you're in object mode, it'll add basic options. So let's quickly add in a default cube here, and we'll take a quick look at the right hand toolbar. Now this is pretty much where most of the work is done. So you can see here we have render properties, so we can change the render engine between even cycles. Out here we have the output properties, so if you want to change the resolution, Simon, <coughs> hint, hint. And obviously you have things like render layers, you have scene properties again, which is more to do with audio, rigid body worlds, things like this. And you obviously have world properties. And Generally, you don't really find yourself in these ones. You generally find yourself in things like the transform, add modifiers. There's a whole bunch of tutorials on my channel if you want to check it out. And then you have things like particles and obviously bullet dynamics. And then you have object constraints, vertex groups. This is where you generally find your UV maps, your vertex groups. And obviously, and the big one is materials. But let's say, for example, you want to set up for, but you don't have any idea how to do it. If you actually go to object, go to quick effects, go to quick fur, you then have fur. And what I can do here is I can go to the materials and I can use the nodes. I'm actually going to change the render engine to cycles and it means I can use the principal hair shader. And if I go back down to materials, I click here, let's find principal hair, let's change the color and let's make it a kind of orange. And let's enable the render engine 
let's see what we're getting. Lovely. Now I'm actually using a daily build of Blender and this is one great thing about it is you always get to be one step ahead when you download the experimental stuff. Does it always work? No, that's why they've got Blender LTS, long term support, and that's what I recommend you use. I could go on for hours about Blender, but do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, support me in Gumroad, you know what to do.